folks, welcome to Coco's Basement. Got a little breakdown lesson for you on the Jumeraquai track, Don't Give Hate a Chance. Before we get started in this lesson though, I'd advise you to pop over to the website www.cocosbasement.com and download the PDF transcription for this tune. I'll be going through this quite quickly so you'll need the transcription at hand to follow along. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So we have this intro section, which basically for the transcription purpose and the way that I've played it on the performance video, um, I'm playing the synth line. So basically uh, it's an octave line that slides uh, slides away and, and just repeats through that. And then uh, there's an accent uh, from the C sharp to the D uh, to ring out the chord before it kicks in to the verse. Um, so I play that, that's the original bass part just plays and holds that uh, and then I slide into it but I'm going back to the synth line again. So it goes a little something like this nice and slow. So you're playing on beat two of each bar um, with the octave line. So if you're thinking in quavers, think one and two and three and four and so always keep that in mind as you're playing through this. Uh, first bit. So you're playing over F sharp. So the F sharp is on your ninth fret on your A string, and the octave is on the eleventh fret on your G string. So and you're sliding down away from that. Uh, and I'm using the fingers, the index finger and the pinky to fret octaves. I, I mostly use the index and, and pinky. Uh, for octaves, uh, the reason being that it leaves these two fingers free to mute the strings that you're not using, uh, especially for me playing a six string or use of uh, those of you who are playing a five string, you need to keep hold of these uh, lower strings to make sure that they don't uh, ring out over this line. So, so that's that's the fingering that I'm using. So the line goes one, two, three, four. One. Um, so that's the the bit where the bass actually creeps in. So for those of you playing it on a five string, you'd play it on your second fret to third fret, which is C sharp to D. Uh, I'm just using uh, index and middle for that. Or you can use, or those of you playing four string, you can play it on fourth fret and fifth fret on your A string. So, it pl uh, so immediately I play that and then go back to the line. And then, and then kick into the verse. So I'll play it once more, nice and slow, all the way through, just so you, you, you get the gist of it. So one, two, three, four, one. Basically, the slide, it's written on the transcription as a slide from uh, your C uh, sharp uh, up to an A, but to be honest, it's it's that quick and fast, it, it doesn't matter, it's roughly around that area and I'm just playing right off the octave. So now we are on to the verse line, now it's a, a six bar phrase. It basically spans over three chords and it starts off on the F sharp minor seventh. They're all minor seventh chords. Now, one thing you should take from this first and foremost uh, is that it's outlining the minor seventh arpeggio in some way or another. 
Um, the first line is basically on octaves, so you've got this. And then it does a walking uh, line uh, from the root to the second, to the minor third, to the fifth, and then it, which is a, a transition point to the next chord. Uh, and these are used in octaves, so so really what you should be paying attention to the most is that it's outlining the minor chord and you can steal these lines to put into your own plane when you play over a minor chord. Um, most of the time this should work. Um, you're only playing root, second, minor, third and a fifth with the octave and there's some fills that fell from the minor uh, seventh to the uh, octave so the first line again we've got this uh, disco bass line which is basically semi quavers on the and which which go one and and uh, I suppose it would be so one and a one and a oh, dum did de dum did de dum <laughs> whatever way you want to look at um but you should memorize this this is a, a great example of uh how to get into reading music if you watch that phrase you'll find that phrase in so many different combinations but that rhythm which is a quaver to two semi quavers it's basically one and, but the and split into two. So it goes. And then the walk up, which is just single octaves. One and two and three and four and. So that's F sharp and uh, the second fret on your E string. The octave, which is the fourth fret on your D string. Then the walk up is the F sharp to the octave, which is the fourth fret on your D string. Moves up to the uh, G sharp, which is the fourth fret on your E string, and the sixth fret on your D string. Then to the A which is the 5th fret on your E string to the 7th fret on your D string then to the C sharp which is the 5th of the chord uh, and that's the 4th fret on the A string and the 6th fret on your G string so you have this And that moves us to the B minor chord. Now the B minor chord uh, plays the octave again. So we go down to the, the B, which is the second fret on your A string and the fourth fret on your G string. So you get this. So one, diddy, two, and. Um, and then it goes to the minor seventh of the chord, which is A, and then goes back to the octave, which is the uh, B. So the A is the second fret on your G string, to the f back to the fourth. So you get this. Uh, sorry. Now I'm doing a little trill shake which basically second fret, I'm going over the third fret and back and forth, but I'm not hovering over it too long. It's just a quick pivot. And the way that you pivot is from your thumb, you're moving your finger like that. So you're pushing your finger. Do it like that, so. So you might need to practice that to get that trill or vibrato, whatever way you want to look at. Um, as opposed to doing that, it's a different way to approach it. But don't just do that, do it that way, because you'll want to be able to do it on each finger. 
So it goes. <laughs> And then there is a dead note, which is basically just placing your fingers on the string, but not actually fretting anything. So you get this th thump, and then uh, the E to F sharp, which is the fourth of the chord to the fifth of the chord. And that's the second fret on your D string to the fourth fret on your D string. And it's a kind of hammer on. So dead note before, and make sure when you do hammer-ons, it's the length that it's meant to be, which is a semi-quaver. It's not rushed. It's so you get this. So it's nice and even. So, that's the first part of the B minor chord, then it does another uh, walk, walking motion, um, basically goes from the root of the chord to the second, to the minor third, to the fifth, to the octave, and slides up to the ninth, and back to the root. Um, in tab terms, that's uh, the second fret on your A string to the fourth fret on your A string to the fifth fret on your A string to the fourth fret on your D string to the fourth fret on your G string and then hammer on up to the sixth fret on your G string and then back down and again you do a little trill on the sixth fret and your this is quavers uh, or eighth notes, so you're going one and two and and then a. So uh, one and two and three, and then right before the next uh, bar you have a push into the C sharp with a dead note before it so it goes and that C sharp is on your A string so a dead note on the A string and that leads into the D minor chord the D minor 7 chord so, so from the F sharp to the B minor line uh, which is the first four bars go like this. Yep. I'll play that once more. Slightly faster. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs>